Humiliation content needs to stop. Nine times out of 10, if you ask the average civilian what their goal is in life, most people would probably say some variation of being successful, starting a family, finding out how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop, you know, the huge. They most likely wouldn't say being humiliated in front of hundreds of thousands of people on the World Wide Web. But it's not like the mortification and indignity that- I mean, what do y'all want to be when you grow up? I feel like you usually say your your job, right? Like, what do you want to do? What do you want to do when you grow up? Make money, you know, travel the world, impact people positively, have a family. Like, yeah, what he's saying makes sense. But I think a lot of people's a lot of people's job aspirations have changed drastically. Graphic designer, music producer, entrepreneur, YouTuber, cybersecurity. It is weird that a lot of people want to be YouTubers now. Like, that used to not even be, like, a career that people aspired to have. It used to just be, you know, astronaut like that. That would be, like, the base answer. I mean, a lot of you guys are, you know, not five years old. Most of you guys are probably, like, 16, 17. So you're kind of solidifying yourself into, like, what you want to do with your life. But when you're, like, five and you ask somebody what they want to do with their lives, people used to be like astronaut, doctor, physician. They wouldn't say physician. They'd be a brain surgeon, some stupid sh that they know makes a lot of money and it's hard. These screwballs were seen as unwarranted because they're on these apps making themselves look like bigger clowns than Ronald McDonald. Cloud and money has really blurred the vision of so many individuals like they're dealing with astigmatism or something, bro. And as each day passes, I can't help but think about how most content is falling from grace harder than- I think I just swallowed metal. Then Rod Wade fell off that balcony. So today, We'll be discussing some of the most depraved and iniquitous content creators, as well as some of the most futile and desperate videos that I've ever witnessed with my own peepers. Comment down below some of the most humiliating content that you've ever seen on the internet, and like and subscribe if you're new. Now, what do I mean by humiliation content? Pretty much content that makes people look like complete imbeciles and usually results in their name getting more dirt thrown on it than a used coffin. First, we gotta talk about food-related content. Now, I've already discussed mukbang and ASMR lore in previous videos. Does Nikocado Avocado still make, like, mukbangs? <laughs> Ew. Who's the guy in the back that said, ew? No, so I really want to go in depth and put the microscope on these gargantuan gluttons. If you're overeating to the point where you're packing on more pounds than a bear going into hibernation, then you've got a problem. These motherfuckers are out here breaking a sweat and hyperventilating just from eating. Alright, that looks good as fuck, though. It's just gluttony at this point. And then they got the audacity to be talking about, I can't believe I'd spend $90 on McDonald's. My nigga, you're worried about the wrong greens. Go ahead and throw you some vegetables on that plate. I'm pretty sure already informed about the bipedal water balloon that is Nikocado Avocado. Him going from Buddy Love to Sherman Clump was truly one of the most- Wasn't that also like a span of like eight years that he gained that weight? Like he didn't gain it quickly. Most distressing and repulsive character arts I've ever seen. But in doing my due diligence for this video, I stumbled across this individual who calls herself Hungry Fat Chick, who apparently is a former fetish model, which tells me everything I need to know. And she's pretty much on the same type of time as Mr. Avocado, in which she consumes an agglomeration of hard stopping cuisine on camera and calls it a day. But if you make your way down south to her comment section, it's pretty- Can I ask who watches mukbang videos? Do you guys ever can- Do you guys ever watch mukbang videos? Like they get- I understand Nikocado Avocado because it's supposed to be like funny, but who the fuck is sitting down and like googling seafood boil seafood boil 5,000 5,000 calories pretty much full of people telling her that she's slowly but surely decreasing her life expectancy or just sending hate in general but yet she continues to upload these in order mukbang videos and it's really sad to see how people continue to put their health and lives at risk just for a couple extra zeros on their paycheck but then there's also some people who seem to support this preposterous behavior talking about why do you guys care it's her life my niggas not gonna be her life for long the grim reaper's coming to collect debt but in all seriousness I don't condone bullying people because of their weight when you clearly don't have any regard for yourself or your well-being, then that becomes paradoxical. It's literally like watching that looked fucking disgusting. And then that becomes paradoxical. It's literally like watching someone exploit themselves. But the food humiliation doesn't stop at YouTube because if you follow me over to the gloomy and calamitous pits of TikTok hell, you'll find two specimens that go by the names Yudi Gang and Big Groove. They're pretty much if Scooby Doo and Shaggy had a fucking TikTok page because not only do these motherfuckers consume a shit ton of food, the manner in which they do it triggers my fight or flight response, bro. Like you can't look at this shit on your screen and tell me that it doesn't set us back about 500 years, bro. Not to mention I would get secondhand embarrassment every time I would see these niggas on my feed. And then this big buff back ass nigga be trying to hit the cha-cha and all type of shit after eating the food. This nigga built like Machope and want to be dancing like Chris Brown or something. You too damn swell to be trying to move like this. This is dead ass some Terry Crews shit, bro. And his partner in crime does nothing but add insult to injury. If I was the waiter at one of these restaurants, I would jazzy Jeff this nigga so quick, bro. It's really just a more modern version of what King Batch used to do. Dude, but like making content on TikTok is like no longer, no longer valuable unless the video's a minute because they're not going to get paid anything. So if they're doing this as a job, 
how are they creating TikTok like clips where they're dancing and eating food that are minute long? Like that no one's watching that. Now we gotta talk about these dating shows that are trending all over YouTube. I'm pretty sure if you've been on YouTube the past month or so, then you're already aware of these balloon popping videos, especially since the clip of this room. But I don't really have a problem with this show or its format. I actually find it quite humorous when somebody enters the room and it starts sounding like an afternoon in Chicago in there. And every why, that's why so many videos on TikTok are replayed twice to make it a minute. Yeah. Like if you watch a funny meme, it might be on loop like four times, so it's a minute long and then they get paid. Everybody that comes on the show is respectful for the what most. You hate about TikTok, literally everything. I'm not going on that rant. Part. However, I can't say the same thing about these 20v1 videos that everybody's trying to do now. It's like this plague that's contaminated every sector of YouTube. Seriously, yeah, you, when you guys request for me to watch those. No part of me wants to watch them. The only 20v1 I considered watching was sketches because I thought that would be funny. But the shit where it's just like 20 random models that they hire to like try and riz up like either a man or a woman or any whoever they have on. It's so fucking cringy because it, it the, if you're talking about staged videos, 20v1s are every single 20v1 video staged. All of them. But anywho, these videos have to be some of the most perverted and corrupted that I've ever laid eyes upon. And the reason why I say these videos are humiliating is because these contestants literally line themselves up like a damn firing squad and just let these men and women objectify them. It's literally just a hornball convention, bro. Y'all need to get the horny demons exercised out of y'all bodies effectively immediately. Let me put something on your mind real quick. Imagine you're a woman who agreed to appear in one of these videos, right? You wake up right and early, you take a shower, you get a good breakfast in, do your makeup, put on a nice outfit, just for a nigga to ask you if you can make it clap. And don't even get me started on when these freaky ass niggas be talking about do a little 360 for me. Imagine these women go on to have children they grow up seeing their mom trying to get freaky with Charleston white crackhead ass. Holy shit bro, irremediable trauma. And most of the time these niggas still be finding matches. Like what the fuck am I doing wrong? These videos wholeheartedly give me PTSD from those smash and pass videos from like 2017. And it's non-stop with this shit too. Like this format is getting milked more than some dairy cattle. This shit is honestly embarrassing to watch and it's part of why modern dating is more cooked than a rotisserie chicken. And before I get people in the comments talking about- I think modern dating's cooked because of dating apps. I think that's- I think that's the problem. I, I want to say dating apps help people find other people, but dating apps also kind of gamify the idea of of talking to someone. Uh, it removes like the, you know, not the human aspect, but it, it, it it's not like a regular conversation. It's not like an authentic way, natural way of meeting somebody. It still works in a lot of ways, but like Tinder, I'm not I'm not shitting on like Hinge or like some of the other ones. Like a lot of my friends have found like girlfriends off like Bumble or Hinge or places like that, but people people going on Tinder and like just spam swiping hundreds of people just to match with like fucking sick of them and then just like immediately bring the conversation somewhere that would be like in the fucking 10th date and they're just they go on one date might hook up and then never talk again like that's why dating's in the fucking gutter it's just entertainment dude if this is considered entertainment then the bar must be lower than bikini bottom bro now we gotta talk about brain rock content and content farms youtube shorts has caused irreversible damage to the minds of toddlers and children worldwide some of the content that i've seen floating around these youtube streets has been nothing short of odious and enervating i feel like this shit literally hypnotizes the youth in becoming the most annoying and half-witted entities known to man we already know about the typical gen alpha slang skip d toilet riz edging sigma <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I gotta brush my teeth after saying that shit. But anyway, I remember back when memes and slang used to actually have substance. And don't get me wrong, I, I don't think that, like, Gen Alpha being on YouTube is bad either. I think Gen Alpha being on short form media is the problem. Like, I used, did y'all use YouTube at a young age? Like, I used YouTube when I was like fucking six. Like, I remember using YouTube whenever it came, maybe not six, whenever it came out. Whenever, when, when was YouTube created? Well, 2005, I was three. Okay, so I was using YouTube, like, back when, like, Smosh was a thing. But I would watch, I would watch that when I was, like, seven. Like, whenever they were coming out with those videos in, like, 2009. When I would watch those, it, it wasn't, like, rotting my brain because it's still long-form content. Like, I don't want to say Skibbity Toilet... <laughs> is good because it's not it's just there's no story there's no substance like if you put on skibbity toilet like hold up like this has this has 18 million views in two weeks like what's happening Like, 
there's no story. There's no, it's just like, it's like, it's like, uh, like just appealing to like your senses. It's like, it's like watching like stimulation content. I 100% agree with the fact that there was brain rot on the internet back in the day. Those MLG videos and YouTube poop compilations were crazy, but I feel like those were a lot more rare compared to today's cesspool of fuckery. And thanks to the help. Yeah, like, of I never even watched like the YouTube poop shit. YouTube shorts and TikTok. People's attention spans are shorter than the clips that they're watching. Every time I would see one of these videos, it felt like I was surfing through the dark web, bro. It felt illegal. And like with Vine, I don't want to say Vine wasn't bad either because Vine was short form. But like, did any of y'all here use Vine? Vine when it was six second videos, it was short form media and like a lot of it was brain rot. But you wouldn't sit on Vine for five hours. TikTok, you can scroll for fucking the whole day. But like Vine, I remember I would go on Vine for like 30 minutes. I'd watch a few funny videos and then I'd go, okay, I'm gonna go watch YouTube, you know? And I would go watch a fucking 30 minute playthrough of something. I genuinely feel like my IQ drops by at least 50% after seeing one of these videos. But one of the YouTube channels I wanna specifically talk about that I feel- I would sit on Vine for 15 hours. You would watch, dude, so you would sit on Vine for 15 hours, so you're telling me you would watch like 10,000 six-second videos. It was one of the masterminds behind this smooth brain generation is Lanky Box. These motherfuckers are like a damn brain rot factory. Just look at their thumbnails. You can't tell me that this shit wouldn't kill a peasant from the dark ages. I need a pair of sunglasses just to look at it. And then their videos contain more sound effects and edits and actual words. No bullshit. After seeing a snippet of one of their videos, I had to go meditate like I was Rafiki or something. It has to be some of the most overstimulating material that I've ever come in contact with. And if these are the effects that it's having on me, I can only imagine what it's doing to the young, impressionable fetuses of the world. I'll I promise you, if the government started forcing inmates to have to sit and watch Lanky Box content nonstop, the crime rate would fall quicker than Humpty Dumpty. I just want you to watch this clip and even attempt to tell me that you don't feel your brain melting like a snowman in Texas. Let him get down! Oh, why are we hiding, Justin? Shh. I thought Lanky Box used to make like IRL shit. What the fuck is this? Skabini Toilet is outside our house. How did they find us? I have no idea, but let's watch all Skibbity Toilet episodes together and learn how to stop them before they oof us. Seriously, bro. This makes Caillou look like an Emmy nominated show. I've always had a problem with people monetizing the literal degradation of people, especially children. And don't even get me started on the Manny show. Remember back in the day when YouTubers actually had to put in effort to create captivating and compelling content? Now you can just make the most goobers and mind numbing content known to man and make millions of dollars from it. This started excuse for a comedian got the nerd be trying to strike niggas channels down when he makes some of the most bird brain videos ever i'm going back on that jeffrey dahmer series that coming on netflix and this nigga was spamming videos idolizing the cops return jeffrey dahmer's 19 year old boyfriend and making jokes about jeffrey dahmer plus he steals content from smart creators and gives no credit whatsoever so if y'all end up seeing this video just know if this fake ass eileen from regular show got to me Editor Gabe here, um, apparently he apologized for all the disarray and commotion he caused but that still doesn't change the fact that you still make brain rock content anyway back to the video and some channels even go as far as to pretty much make softcore prawn for children. I'm not even gonna go open that can of worms because that's a whole different video for an entirely different day. But I'll just throw a thumbnail on the screen and let your imagination finish the rest. It's pretty much Elsa Gabe with some minor changes. Someone really needs to start cracking down the wheels behind these videos because it's really getting out of hand. Whenever I curse in a video- Damn, dude. I remember when I was a kid, I used to look up boobs on YouTube. Do you think like Gen Alpha in like 15 years is gonna look back and be like, oh uh, yeah, I used to watch the Elsa edits or some weird shit. YouTube is ready to come off the top rope like Randy Savage and clobber my ass with all type of- Somebody said I used to look up kissing videos? Oh, hell no. Age restrictions and whatnot. But these niggas can upload cartoon OnlyFans content and YouTube- Now, I remember, I remember when I was 10, I used to look up uh, kissing tutorials on YouTube because I was like, I'm gonna need to know how to do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to know how to do this. I'm gonna need to know how to do this, so I should probably, I should probably learn how to. YouTube HQ turns the other sheet. But some content farmers are straight up cornballs. I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with Ben Tillett. And outside of him threatening to sue an OnlyFans girl because she wouldn't his prehistoric ass hit he's known for making the most low effort and inauthentic shorts on the platform I'm literally just reading tweets when a woman asks you a question and sits like this just tell the truth because she's already got the facts, facts. <laughs> someone needs to make an app where you can hum and it identifies the song because I'm so <laughs> Yo, that's like wild you can make money from doing that though. Like he's probably made like a good salary from just reading tweets and then fake laughing at you. Hey, that was nice. I had a good time. Me too. Can we see each other again? <laughs> Yeah, I'ma just hand you one of these, little bro. This is the type of shit only Facebook models. Like the rise of Ben Telect is more shocking than the rise of the Hawk Tour girl. Because the Hawk Tour girl was like a meme. Ben Telect literally just reads tweets. Posted thousands of these videos to the internet, ruining the day of anybody that comes in contact with them. But let me know if y'all want to see me make a whole separate video on content farms and brain rot. Now, the last person that I believe humiliates himself for clout, attention, and money is Kevin Leonardo. Believe me when I tell you this. 
Okay, we're good. This is without a doubt the most deranged and perturbing. So this is what my butthole looks like. Perturbing NC that I've ever seen on YouTube. This motherfucker should be banned just off the strength of his titles alone. Even if this is a joke, is this not concerning? That's a title of his YouTube video. This motherfucker should be banned just off the what strength the of his fuck? titles alone. Even if this is a joke, is this not concerning? The day I found out about this individual still haunts me to this day. One of my homies has sent me the link to that Nair video. Bro said what, Joe? That's that. That's what he says in the Nair video. This is how hairy my butt is right now. <laughs> <laughs>